Good day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here. I am your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo bringing you another vlog. And today we're talking about tenant qualifications, what to allow and what not to allow. Let's get it started. So guys, for all of you that are currently self-managing, I strongly suggest that you hire a property manager. Now why? Well, that's a topic for another day. But for everyone else that is um, managing uh, or has their properties managed by a professional property manager, um, I do want to share something with you that I think is pretty important. And um, as much as you kind of want, you know, uh, procedures and policies within a property management company, like, you know, they do certain things this way and this is how it all works. Um, you know, I think some of the best property management companies, you know, do have their procedures and policies um, in row and, and that's very important. But um, the way we manage, I guess, is a little bit different and I guess we're more flexible and we can adapt to the situation better. And look, I think that's also important too because it just kind of gives a personal touch element um, to managing properties and evaluating a prospect tenant um, with kind of a different set of eyes in a, in a different way. Um, so look, and this, these are some of the tips that even the folks that are self-managing, you could potentially implement when you're pre-qualifying a tenant. Um, so look, what I, uh, so I'll, let me first start off by telling you something that we do. So there's, there's three kind of checks that we like to implement when we're pre-screening tenants um, or evaluating, you know, if that particular candidate is going to be right for one of our properties. So the first one is income verification. We want to make sure that the tenant is earning at least, um, you know, three times the amount of the monthly rent. That is very important. You know, you just need to know if the tenant can afford um, um, that monthly rent. Even if you know certain things happen within their budget and unexpected costs occur, there still has to be sufficient enough um, funds available so they can cover their rent, right? So that's kind of the first thing: income verification. Um, you know, ask for um, uh, uh, proof of income. Call the employer. You know, make sure that they are indeed employed and that is what they're getting based on what it says in their pay stub. I've had tenants lie before and um, actually commit fraud by giving us you know, wrong numbers. So it's very important that you pick up the phone and make that call. Um, the second thing would be eviction history. Um, you know, in my opinion, uh, you probably don't wanna be putting anyone in your property that has any kind of um, eviction on their record. I'm gonna talk about that here in a second, but that is something that we do. We also look for any evictions. And of course, criminal background, um, you know, we make sure that there's no major criminal activity that has happened within um, the most recent years, um, or even, uh, you know, throughout their life, um, if there's any criminal or major criminal activity, we will not, you know, want to rent the property to them, okay? So the first one, let me just repeat them for you, is um, we do income verification. Second one is we do eviction history. And third one is criminal background, okay? So now, what we are sometimes willing to bend on and what we um, kind of want to dig in deeper just to understand the circumstances better, um, uh, that would be eviction history, okay? Especially if that specific tenant tells us that it was a mistake, that it was an error, that they actually um, gave the landlord notice, they vacated the property, but then the landlord went ahead and proceeded with evicting that specific tenant, and that is why they have an eviction on their record, which is four or five years old or whatever it may be. Um, believe it or not, guys, there are many instances um, where a, a prospect tenant um, has just been unjustly evicted out of the property, even though they gave enough notice and a heads up to that specific landlord, but that landlord was just you know, an asshole or whatever, and they decided to, you know, evict them for whatever reason. So we're, we're willing to listen to the story and dig deeper. And um, there have been instances where we actually approved tenants um, that did have an eviction on their record, but it wasn't justified. Um, so we approved them. Um, look, another thing that we specifically don't really take into consideration much, we do kind of briefly glance over it, but it's not like a be all and end all for us. And that is um, the credit score. Look, we're in a market here in the Midwest, um, Toledo, Ohio specifically, and I'm sure that a lot of the other um, uh, folks in real estate can vouch um, for the Midwest. You look, the credit scores here of most people aren't the greatest, um, but it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, as long as the income adds up and the income, for, you know, the income is there as in three times the amount of rent, um, you know, we're not too worried about um, the, the credit score just because if someone doesn't necessarily pay, you know, a, a Walmart or a Best Buy, whoever it may be, and the credit score isn't the greatest, um, we won't discriminate against them because of a credit score, right? And, and this is coming from someone that 
I've lived here for a long time now. Um, I run various successful companies um, and I'm talking millions and millions of dollars in revenue. And to be honest with you, my credit score isn't the greatest. Why? Because of the history of it. You know, I didn't move here when I was 18 and, and I didn't have a credit score for, for a long time. So it's kind of a very weird algorithm how the whole credit system works. So it's something, once again, that we don't necessarily pay too much attention to. Of course, someone that has a great credit score, you know, the more the merrier, but it's not something that we really, really focus on. Another thing, guys, that I want to stress to you um, that I also think you should dig in deeper and understand the story better is criminal background, okay? Um, you know, we have approved folks that had um, you know, uh, a dent in their criminal history, which is 10, 15, or 20 years old. Of course, it would depend on what that specific item was. Um, we also want to hear the full-blown story, um, read any court docs if we can, just kind of fully understand what was going on, why it happened, how it happened. We all make mistakes, okay? Um, I'm sure you've made a lot of them, and I can, I'm positive that a lot of you that are watching this video right now probably made some, you know, criminal mistakes that you didn't get caught for. Um, so look, I think that everyone needs a second chance. Of course, uh, I'm throwing a disclaimer out there. It just depends on what the criminal background activity consists of and what shows up. But look, we definitely um, are willing to work with someone that might have something on their record, which is 10, 15, 17 years old. Um, or, or even if it's something re recent, not too, too recent, um, we're happy to listen to the story to get to understand them better. So guys, look, once again, you know, um, yes, it's it's okay if your property manager is cut and dry and they have these, you know, procedures and policies in place where if you don't meet these parameters, you're done, just like any traditional lender does. We, on the other hand, um, like being a little bit more flexible. We like to adapt to the circumstances. And look, I always like to say this, money speaks every language. So here's a hypothetical scenario. If someone was going to rent your property, and they had a DUI on their record, which is 17 years old, but they said, I will pay you a year's worth of rent in advance, what would you do? Would you accept, would you accept that tenant or would you decline them because of a DUI, hypothetically speaking, that's 17 years old? So once again, you know, weigh up the options. At the end of the day, um, you, know, you as the landlord um, or you know, us as the property management company, we kind of have um, you know, the authority to either approve or, or not approve based on you know, what our policy is. Um, so, uh, but once again, uh, you know, I definitely think you should um, investigate further before making any um, rash decisions. So that's kind of how we do it. Um, look, hey, I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear from any other property managers out there, experienced landlords, or even beginner landlords. And um, what are some of the things that you are willing to bend on um, when it comes to um, tenant qualifications and some of the things that are absolute, you know, no go, red flag, you're out, um, you know, you can't, can't lease this property. So I'd um, love to hear from you. Please comment below. Um, that's pretty much it. I appreciate your time. And um, once again, I'm Angela Ramora. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo. I'll catch you in the next vlog.